So the next thing that I want to do is just demonstrate to you um, once again uh, how to imp some of the options for importing and exporting uh, using other importing and exporting into 3D Studio Max after creating particular geometries or line types in another piece of software, in this case AutoCAD. And um, the other thing that I'll show you, well the example that I'll use is uh, being able to generate um, a three-dimensional set of contours or a terrain in 3D Studio Max. And also what I'll do is import and show you how if you were to create your own set of stairs how you can create a little kind of staircase um, element from line work that you may have generated somewhere else. Okay, So in the case of the, the contour exercise what I've done is I've drawn some two-dimensional uh, two-dimensional uh, polylines that represent say a little chunk of a, a site map that you may be given um, at some time. Okay, and what I'll do, that's in top view, I'll just show you how it's been built. It, as you can see from this isometric view, it's actually two-dimensional, okay? So, um, in the z-direction, I haven't actually put these lines at their respective height. I'm going to do that when I get over to 3D Studio Max, and that's the same with this little staircase example. I'll set the height of the stairs when I get over to 3D Studio Max. Okay, and just to further demonstrate that they are actually flat, I'll go over to the left view. You can see there, that they're dead flat. Now these are all just polylines. Now a lot of the time when you get, um, say, a contour map from a, a, a survey company, they'll give you a file with a series of vector lines, and you can this little technique will allow you to be able to model that up in three dimensions. Okay, so first things first, let's uh, revise on importing and exporting. So I've saved this file to a little fo folder called uh, Technical Lecture 10. All right, I've given it the name Terrain. I've also in my layers here all the con all the for the example of the contours, I've put it on a layer called Contours, and it's green. For my little stair example, I've done the same thing. Okay, so the reason I've divided them up is because I wanted to, I want two files or two objects when I come into 3D Studio Max that can remain independent of each other, and then I won't have to do uh, extensive amounts of commands in 3D Studio Max. So it is easier, I guess, um, and you have to start to learn what software is best at doing what. And AutoCAD is second to none as far as um, control of drawing. Uh, vector line work, copying, offsetting, doing things like that. We could have very well uh, drawn over something in 3D Studio Max that would give us a series of uh, splines that we could then turn into this terrain, but it's a lot easier in this software. So save it really quickly once again. I know that DWGs are a great file format for moving between software, and a DWG file is the native format out of AutoCAD. So I can simply go over to 3D Studio Max, shoot down to my import command under my file menu, go up here, hit import, locate where I've saved that, which I've already done, and press open. Now when you import a DWG file or a non-native file into 3D Studio Max, you'll be given a, a dialog that's specific to that file format. In the case of a DWG or a DXF file, which uh, if you want to learn about what a DXF file is, you can just type it into Wikipedia. Uh, we get three tabs. One that controls the functionality of the geometry, or in this case the polylines that we've created. One that controls the layer properties of those. And the last one, how if we do bring in lines or polylines or splines, how if we do hit the little teapot that will appear when we render them. Um, first option here under, we'll go back to geometry, I'm happy with the layers, I'm going to import all three different types of layers. Uh, I don't really care too much for how it's going to render because I'm going to apply modifiers to these lines. Um, I don't want to render them. And the, the, the more important tab is the geometry tab. So uh, model scale has to do with if you haven't set up your um, unit scales to match in both files. So I suggest that as I have in the past, that they're always the same when you're working with multiple virtual kind of environments. 
uh, the incoming files are millimeters so I don't have to rescale it because my unit system setup in max is already in millimeters I want to derive geometry by the layer that it's sitting on the reason I'm doing that is because these are on the contour layer these are on the stair layer if you can remember from here uh, these are options we don't need to worry about too much about uh, yet because um, uh, it would kind of open up a whole heap of other questions but if you need to learn about these little things you can always go to the help menu um, and the same thing with a lot of these geometry options they're more to do with um, geometry more than uh, line data I guess um, specifically but you know in the case the, the in this case I guess what what's always good is well that's not entirely true a lot of these actually apply to anything you bring in but um, The next one's to do with geometry options, and in the ca in this case, I'm going to leave it as defaults because um, it might open up again too many questions. But uh, you'll be fine with the defaults for the purpose of these more basic basic introductory uh, level operations. And then the last one's just to do with um, particular objects that sometimes you can bring in. Say in or say AutoCAD, you can actually create lights and environments to a degree and things that have already been referenced um, but we're not going to include any of that stuff so I hit OK now it's it's happened the geometries have happened to come in up here and the reason being is because if I go back up to AutoCAD I actually placed these bits of geometry um, I think the screens reset so it might not show us but if I draw a line from zero zero out like so I've actually placed these two things that I've drawn 80 meters across the environment so that they pop in 80 meters across here so on this world coordinate system because I'd already created a lot of this geometry that I showed in in the earlier part of the exercises uh, I didn't want it, this stuff to come in at zero zero I didn't want it to come in somewhere off in the middle of nowhere so I um align those to the location that I wanted them to be placed when I came over and they have so I'm just going to hit P so we can go to perspective view I'm going to select these two things or actually in this case I think I'll just select the contour layer and I'll hit alt Q to isolate it and you can see it's still flat and the next thing that I need to do to actually start to turn this into a set of contours or perform the modifier that will turn this into the contours I need to elevate these contours to the heights that they sit in the Z direction just like any contour information so I'll do it slowly and manually and how I do that is I edit the spline so because this thing I brought it in by layer it recognizes all of these lines as one single spline element that's kind of been attached together which is, is how I want to work um, I can go to the selection option under the modifier I can select all of these splines and I can treat this one as my zero height and I want it to step if I go just to my left view or actually what I'll do is I'll spin it around to my right view so it matches my perspective like so you can see that this will be my zero and then what I can do if I right click on my select and move tool I can start to bring these up in the Z direction like so. So I'm going to specify for now a half a meter contour interval. So I offset these lines. As long as this is selected here, it's highlighted and I've selected the lines that I want, I can move them up by increment. You can see that it just jumped up. So now what I'll do is I'll deselect using, I think, Alt, uh, one line at a time, and I'll move the next one up. And now I could have moved these lines up into position in AutoCAD but I want to do it here um, just because I'm personally I'm more comfortable at modeling in 3D Studio Max okay so I'm just going to finish this off and I'll come back to you alright so I've moved all of these into um, add it to a particular height and here's a really interesting little thing um, if I had set those spline rendering options I'll just change this yellow to a white for now just so we can see it a little bit easier in the viewport if I had set those spline rendering options when I hit 
import, it would actually render the lines. You can see there that nothing comes up because I haven't set it. Um, but don't forget in the modifiers you can still alter that using the renderer. So I can enable it in the renderer, these lines, so that when I render it they'll appear or I can deactivate that if I want. And I can also give these a thickness. So I'll just set 0.1 and I'll hit render and we should be able to start to see something. So that might give you an idea of how to kind of abstractly start to present a landscape like so. But if we actually wanted to really put a terrain to it and mesh this entire surface, um, the way we do that is going over to the create menu. Again, once, once again it's under the compound objects. I can select this line data and I can simply press the button terrain. And once I do that, now I'll just quickly go over it again, just so you guys know. We uh, go to the create tab, we're on compound objects, we select the line data, and we press terrain. And what it does is it creates a mesh across those surfaces for us, uh, those lines for us. So what it's really done is it's just triangulated a surface that matches to all of the vertice points of those lines. So the more uh, vertice points we have, the the more information is natively generated by that terrain tool. And I'll just take you through some of the um, parameters. So I'm now over on the modifier tab. That's a graded surface, which is kind of the uh, default. I can then mesh it out, create a box out of it using graded solid. I can also have this one called layered solid. And if I'd actually um, uh, had another line under there, it would probably be a little bit neater on the bottom le level, but it, it works for now. Um, I'll go back to graded solid for now. Um, we can also simplify it. So at the moment there's a lot of vertice points, probably a little bit more complex than a lot of the time you need. You can actually uh, either increase or decrease the number of um, points that the uh, little modifier uses just to abstract it down okay which might help it might not and then then the last thing that we can do is actually there's this thing called uh, color by elevation so to present color by elevation we just use the defaults and you can see here that green is the lowest and it moves the higher it goes uh, it turns to another color and we can specify or modify those color zones if we want to. Alright, so let's just change over and uh, demonstrate the staircase. And what we'll do is use the terrain, but we'll go with the layered solid to actually create a staircase. Okay. So I've just isolated the stairs. I've gone over to its modifier and the editable spline is here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly add a uh, another modifier to the stack. So if I did want to change the scenario, I can actually jump backwards in the stack or set up more than one scenario and turn on and off and toggle between them. So for example, this is flat. Let's say I wanted to set up two staircases, uh, one that was at point 0.2 of an interval, one that was at point 0.1 of an interval. Um, just to, to get a bit of um, variation, I guess, in the design um, and just test them. Uh, let's see how we can do that. First of all, I'll set up a camera looking at it because it's always good to see these little things from eye level. Now, it's quite arbitrary the way that I've created this, so I'm not expecting it to look fantastic, but um, at least if we design from perspective or from a set view, uh, it's something. All right. So let's just move this up a little bit. So it's almost like we're kind of crouching about half a meter off the ground. Uh, as far as selection goes, if you're having trouble selecting something, if we go up here, we can isolate, say, just cameras and it will only select the uh, camera viewport, like so, or, or the camera cameras that are in the scene. Otherwise, inversely, we can choose shapes or geometry. So I'll go back to all now. I'm happy with that. I've, And I guess the key thing to actually testing more than one scenario is creating a modifier for each scenario. That, as we can see here, we can toggle on and off. And the advantage of having a stack is that I can go in 
and I can edit this geometry so I could lift this line just on its own or pull just this vertice point like so and do something to it and I can jump back down and I've still got that original state preserved below it okay that's one of the great things about modifiers okay it doesn't actually change the source geometry and we don't have that kind of functionality when we create um, geometry in AutoCAD alright so what I'm going to do is I'll just go away and on this first spline modifier what I'll do is I'll just uh, stack some contours at 0.2 of a meter okay so to save a little time I just went ahead and also created a second scenario now what I've done is I've actually um, also renamed these so because sometimes a lot of these modifiers get quite complex you can actually right click and rename and uh, I'll call the second one random Whoops, because it's kind of a random distribution of spline work and just to show you what I did and I kind of the first and the second one I was actually looking at how I would see the scene as I did it and how it would eventually render so that that's the point two of a meter high one okay I can also see that you know if I wanted to compose the shot I could potentially start to put some uh, geometry or I could print this out and sketch some of the geometry if the staircase was kind of the central uh, thing the central idea to my um, design or central to my ideas I guess and the second one that I did I just toggle that point two off there I can um, I've created a random one so I renamed that random it didn't happen automatically I just grabbed these lines individually and I pulled and pushed them to a particular height that looked kind of a little bit more dramatic in that viewport so whichever one that I don't want you know I can turn this off turn that one on and then from that scenario I can go in I can terrain this up and what it'll do is it'll hold a lot of the settings from the last time you used it the command so you can see here the simplification still on alright so I just turn that off we've almost got kind of this ramp scenario here but if I wanted it to be a staircase I could have it as a layered solid like so I can also turn back on the displays if I want to of the lines and I could probably do that with the rendering as well and if I wanted to then further neaten this up uh, I could probably interpolate it a little bit more so mesh it a little bit more and as far as say this bottom one it's quite messy although I think it'll probably render okay it's a little bit dark but what I can do if there is some geometry because remember meshes aren't a really pure way of modeling um, they can be messy you could add an editable poly to this and then start to select p bits of geometry that you're finding are sitting on top of each other and it does happen with mesh objects so don't be afraid to kind of jump in and um, start deleting if you need to alright I'm not going to really focus on that but just know that you can if things do get a little bit messed up or you want to further um, mess with it